on 8 out of 10 cats. Something for the weekend, it's Louise Redknapp. The Kane event, it's Russell Kane. And their team captain, Sean Locke. And facing them tonight, wrap it up, it's Example. Stand up guy, it's Mark Watson. And their team captain, John Richardson. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, a survey recently revealed the average British worker spends 25 minutes on Facebook every day. And that figure rises to four hours if they answer the question honestly. <laughs> four out of ten workplace relationships result in marriage. And six in ten result in a written warning about the incident in the stationary car. <laughs> And almost a third of men aged between 20 and 34 live at home with their parents. The most common reasons being cost, convenience, and if you're from Norfolk, sex on tap. <laughs> right, let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellists' job to guess the British public's top three most popular talking points. John, Mark, example. Are we, are we going to call you uh, Elliot or example? Call me my, by my real name, just for this show. OK, example. Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I watched X Factor this week, and it was very exciting, cos Cecil was off sick, so Nadia had to step in. <laughs> Neville was in the bottom two, cos Phyllis said his song choice was all wrong. <laughs> anyway, he got saved and Humphrey's gone out. <laughs> and I might have got the names wrong, but frankly, who gives a shit? Because <laughs> <laughs> the one I hate is Frankie Kokosa. Oh. They're desperate to report that he's cool in my desperate yeah. campaign against the most despicable human on earth. <laughs> this week they said he's been out on a 12-hour bender. He went to Weatherspoons and had a few beers with his mates. Then they went to a club. He got ID'd and they went back to a house. <laughs> <laughs> That's hardly like Oasis throwing a donkey through a hotel window in it. <laughs> <laughs> He got ID'd and he went home. That's not a bender, is it? And then he took three girls this week to car parks. What? He took them to car... NC... Well, fair play, it's more expensive to take a girl to an NCP car park than a hotel. I hate it. You've got to have no talent at all and go on there Harsh. and, um, They're awful. Have you heard Frankie Leona Lewis, it? no talent? Well, she can sing, but that's yeah. about it. Yeah, but she's a singer, so that's, like, the most important part. Oh, well, I can't sing as good as her, but I've been struggling for years to get to this position, to get on this show. Looking now, though. Yeah. <laughs> so it is a weird thing, though, because, it, like, from your world, from sort of, you know, if, you, if you're a rapper, they, you could a rapper ever get anywhere well, it's not even rapper. rapper. It's like, you know, any, anyone who started off from, like, you know, grassroots or underground, you know, like, touring for years. Like, I've done nearly 1,500 gigs and... You know, sort of, you do all these gigs. It's, you know, like stand-up comedy, you know, get, start off at the bottom and just build your way up, and then if you're good, you, you get a chance of making it if you work really hard. And these guys, seemingly, to come out of nowhere on TV for a couple of months, and then they've, you know, record contracts and... A lot of them are expected to go on to become household names, like and then... Vanish. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was completely laughable they had Alexandra Burke as a guest judge on there. That's like having Stevie Wonder judging Miss World, isn't it? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> but, you, know, it's, you know, everyone's got opinions. Most people think I'm awful, so I don't really mind. Louis Walsh, what, what do you think about him? Well, uh, you know, he's all right. <laughs> See, I met Louis in, um, in Dublin and I was offered to write songs for, you know, the winners, cos I can write songs. Did you? And he was like, we need hits! We need hits! <laughs> yeah. That's exactly how I imagine he said it. We need hits! One million percent hits! From what I can look at is, um, his job on the show seems to just be to dis explain where people are from and what they look like. Every time he says, John, you're tall, you're from Ireland. And that's basically... <laughs> <laughs> I think I could probably do that, Louis. <laughs> Every contestant. Sharon, you're a girl, you sing songs, you were born in 1985. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they covered one of your songs, wouldn't that just kill it for you, your credibility as an artist? Well, no, I mean, I'd, I'd probably have a choice in that. Would you have a choice? Can I... No. I don't think you do. <laughs> I'd like to hear Johnny Robinson do some... <laughs> do some examples. Johnny Robinson does example. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, do, do you love it? Do you like it? I like it. Well, yeah, I like it. I like a good Saturday night in with a bit of... Strictly an X Factor. The Kelly thing, Kelly being ill, did mm. you buy that? Did you... God, no. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> so 
totally like a cover for, uh, you know, Simon's keeping her on the back burner because he wants a bit of drama in the show. I mean, if you can't see through that, Jimmy, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> She was oh, croaking. get over it. <laughs> <laughs> she what are you was saying? croaking. <laughs> she was she croaking. Was Hello. I'm really sad. Like, she could sound ill. It doesn't stop you flying, does it? Do you reckon, um, Nothing stops you flying, really. Are you in the pain? I think, I think if you've got, like, a, you know, a really contagious fever. Oh, if you've got a bomb in your shoe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got bombs in my shoes. <laughs> I can't come. I got a bomb in my shoes. <laughs> I can't come. I've been radicalized. <laughs> Let me fly. <laughs> well, surprisingly, that's not in our top three. But Kelly Rowland was ill last week, but this week she's been attached to a drip. Louis Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Louise, Russell, what have the nation been talking about this week? Um, well, the thing that seems to be dominating the news is the bloody Greeks. <laughs> yeah. it's the bloody Greeks, isn't it? It's the Greeks. All right, Michael Caine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've been offered a bailout package, and they've said, "Oh, great, we're going to give some help. We'll help you out." They go, oh, thanks. They've come. They've come for help. Asked for help. Been offered help. And then they said, "Just check everyone's fine with having that help." <laughs> but if you've broken down and somebody pulls over and offers you help, you don't go. I'll just check with everybody in the car that they're fine travelling in your Astra. <laughs> I'm saying if they give this bailout to Greece, it's going to cost every family in the UK 14 grand. Mm. It's not like they're going to yeah. knock on the door going, it's Greece, I'll come for the money. <laughs> <laughs> I only earn £15,000. Well, you better start learning how to bake bread, darling. <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't give them any more money. We shouldn't give them another penny. It's not safe. It's like leaving all your savings in a clown's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> if they, if they just spend it. Who decided to let Greece that. come into the Euro? <laughs> Whose decision was that? I don't know, I think Timmy Mamet was involved. <laughs> <laughs> they need to produce something, the Greeks. They need to find a way of earning the money. It's not just a bailout. They need to, uh, you know, maybe some kind of transatlantic banana that people can ride across the Atlantic on a big... They might be expelled. Like, and I just love the idea of Angela Merkel expelling Greece, you know, the German emperor going, you have disappointed us, Greece. <laughs> You're the ex <laughs> They're so cosy, like an evil assistant. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of them, sire. I'm <laughs> in trouble because I worked it out this week. You know when you work all year to get money and then you go on holiday for two weeks? But that's where they live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're basically always on holiday. They live on holiday. Yeah. So, like, they have... <laughs> that is a very, very good point. They get through the year. They get through the year and they go, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go for two weeks in Swindon. I'll go work in the Motorola factory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do all the big things. I'm going to check in, I'm going to check out. I'm going to eat in the canteen. I tell you what, you, you come back more tired than when you went away. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't decide whether it's racist or not, but I like it. <laughs> It's really expensive to go to Greece for, for a holiday. It's, you can get there cheaply, but when you're there, the food's expensive, getting in places, hotels are expensive. You should have gone to Thomas Cook. They were. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Straight into that one, didn't I? In those adverts, why is Jamie oh, no. playing golf with his shirt off? Do you know what? I have to take <laughs> I don't want to play in a club where there's a man wandering around with his shirt off. I take Is he doing a bit of scaffolding while he's there? <laughs> me live that down because I was like, you know, it'd be arty, it'd be cool. And I let him, he's like, okay, I'll, I'll do it. And then Did you he, tell him to do it? I did. And he's got so much stick from that one shot of him on the but beach. Your family do everything, don't they do like M&S, Nintendo? Don't you do everything? Yeah, we're, we're grinning and banking it, example. Grinning and banking it. <laughs> I've announced a European tour. Um, tickets available now if anyone's watching oh. it. <laughs> For year or something. No, no, seriously, because there's no one watching in Europe. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, this is. <laughs> so What's your point then? <laughs> well, this show is massive in Thessalonica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, European tours on sale now. <laughs> Anyone watching in Scandinavia? <laughs> We've only sold four tickets in Stockholm. That's the truth. You think there's people watching in Scandinavia? <laughs> You've sold four tickets no, in Stockholm. It's weird. It's like, uh, even if the venue is like an eight-seater. <laughs> Doing the gig on the bus. It's about 500, but I mean, if there's any Scandinavian people watching in England, maybe fly back to Stockholm next March. <laughs> it's gonna be a good show. <laughs> I think it helps if you say it like you mean it. Yeah. Be a really good show. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> on my Facebook, they're like, why aren't you coming Greece? Why aren't you coming Greece? Why aren't you coming... You know, don't discriminate against Greece because it's the only place I'm not doing in Europe. And I'm like, you know, what are you going to pay me and smash plates or something? <laughs> <laughs> and so let's have a look and see if the Greek crisis is up there. The Eurozone crisis continues. The Greek Prime Minister, George Papandreou, may resign. I suppose if he does, he'll have to go back to his previous job, running the laundrette in EastEnders. <laughs> right, fingers on buzzers. Two more things to get. Uh, some polls. Yeah. Some polls protest. Yeah. Have you been down there, Russell? No. Haven't you? It, I'm not posh enough. It's just a load of it's like, middle weird. class people going, let's have a euro five degrees and pelts and paws. Here's a quail's egg. It's a tomato that some blush you mofos. Take that out of the banks. <laughs> <laughs> they're, not, they're not really drunk in there, are they? They're going home with Let's go back and have gap here. Brown person, photo. Back to the UK, <laughs> hooray! It does feel a little bit like that some middle class people saw Dale Farm and, and yeah. thought, that looks fun. That looks so random. <laughs> we should do that. How random does that look, Ollie? Let's do it. <laughs> oh my God, the totes love it. WTF, what's going on? <laughs> I went down there. I went down there to have a look. Uh, I, I went down there to, uh, to sort of do a review for Campsite magazine. <laughs> 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 I gave it three stars because I said I said the drainage is amazing because obviously Christopher Wren knew a thing or two about it. he built it on a hill very good drainage there as a campsite <laughs> and very good entertainment facilities you've got your pubs your sightseeing and of course there's a chapel on site <laughs> not much for the kiddies not very much <laughs> for the kiddies and the toilet block is frankly a disgrace <laughs> <laughs> I did actually go there. I didn't hang around to use the toilets. I did actually go there. And um, there is quite a sort of buoyant atmosphere there, but there's loads of people <laughs> offering free hugs. And I went up to this girl who was offering free hugs. I said, what'd you get for a tenner? <laughs> <laughs> she, she spat on me and called me a capitalist pig. And I said, I'd pay 20 for that. Um, <laughs> They're spreading. Well, the papers are reporting that, oh, it's not just London now, it's spreading, but I think they're just counting homeless people. Because <laughs> <laughs> they reported that there are six people in Birmingham. That's not a protest against global... That's the most depressing indictment of the fact that no-one really cares. <laughs> six tents in the centre of Birmingham. Bring down the capitalists. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, look, that don't, don't diss the fact that it's six people, cos, you know, poor, poor Elliot here's <laughs> got to go to Stockholm and take a <laughs> fall. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether the protests at St Paul's are one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> most talked about there. Yes, protesters continue to camp outside St Paul's Cathedral. In response to the ongoing protests, Barclays closed its doors, Goldman Sachs gave all its profits to charity, and a flock of pigs swooped majestically across <laughs> the city sky. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, one more thing to get. Uh, Justin Bieber's meant to have fathered a child. Yeah, but it's, it's extraordinary because Justin Bieber's only he's only, only four. Uh, he's so only he's seventeen. <laughs> he's the first. It's why it's in the papers. He's the first four-year-old even to be allowed to have a baby. Yeah. No, he's, he's seventeen <laughs> years of age, but apparently he's had a. Why have we stopped it? Love Is that it. one of his songs? Is that one of his songs? I genuinely songs? didn't know anything he'd done. I didn't know you could get... Cos they, they keep describing it as a romp. Yeah. Which makes me a bit jealous, cos I don't think I've ever romped. <laughs> I think I frolicked once, but I'm not sure. <laughs> but as apparently it was a 30-second romp, oh, and you <laughs> certainly can't have... That's like having a 12-course snack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, 15 go. seconds of that was probably untucking his vest from his Spider-Man pants. <laughs> <laughs> This is the. I mean, uh, Justin Bieber strenuously denies the allegations, but I just uh, strenuously go. No! <laughs> no! I, I didn't. He probably doesn't even know he did it. With that hair, you know his hair. It's like a sheepdog, isn't it? <laughs> he probably thought he went for a really comfy piss. <laughs> <laughs> That is how I'm referring to sex. Let's have a look and see whether Justin Bieber is up there. Well, uh, allegedly up there. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. 
Yes, it's been alleged Justin Bieber has fathered a love child with a fan. It's alleged Bieber only had sex with a girl once and that it lasted 30 seconds. That's pathetic. I could do it twice in 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> So at the end of that round, Sean Russell and Louise have two points. John, example, and Mark have one. <laughs> That's it for part one. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. Our next round is pick of the polls. Sean, Louise, Russell, pick a question. The man with his thumbs up. This is your related yeah. question. Most people think children today are given too much praise. Mm. True or false? Children do get praised too much. For example, like, I mean, my kids, they get praised for, like, eating peas. <laughs> <laughs> and they eat some peas, and even they, go, they spit them out and go... Pff, 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 pff. They still go, oh, well done for trying the peas. <laughs> yeah. Hundreds of years ago, they've been shoved up chimneys. <laughs> and everybody's going, well done, you've eaten some peas. Yes, oh, you too clever. And any piece of... <laughs> Absorbing scribble ends up on the fridge. <laughs> Anything, just me shit. You just go, what is that? <laughs> what are you drawing, an amoeba? What the? <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> it's a tiger or a house. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> and, and, then, and then it ends up on the fridge. It, in my day, it was either the Blue Peter Gallery or the bin. <laughs> <laughs> Do you praise your children? Yeah, I do. I encourage them because I want them to be confident. And I think children can really, I know, they can take everything in like a sponge and then their confidence can go. So I, I think it's important to encourage kids. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the perception's totally skewed by my old man. That's why I've got no, like, everything my dad's good at is the stuff I'm shit at and everything he didn't like is the stuff I was good at because I had to just be opposite to him. Like, he's got all the physical skills. He can look at a shelf and put it up. Get up, slag! And it just goes up like... <laughs> <laughs> what about kids these days? Do you think kids are, are kind of giving too much praise? Uh, yeah, definitely. My dad was harsh on me. He's like, I'm going to get in the music game. He was like, good luck with that. And yeah. I was, he was like, come to me when you've got a top 40. I was like, Dad, I'm number 19 of charts. He's like, come to me when you've got a top 10. I was like, yeah. Dad, I'm number six. So I, 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 Dad, will you come to me when you're number one. I was like, Dad, I'm number one. He's like, come to me when you sold out Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> He was quite interesting. He would give you some encouragement if, you know, on certain things. Like, he used to yeah. play that game. You know that game, Spine in a Sack? We used to play that. Do you ever play that? Spine. <laughs> spine. spine. You ever play that when you were a kid? Spine in a Sack? Spine, spine in a Sack. Spine in a Sack. It sounds more like what a he do? Injury. What he'd do is he'd go out and get some roadkill. <laughs> well, he'd get a roadkill and he'd whip the spine out, get the old no. spine out, then he'd break up all the vertebrae, put it in a sack, then he'd bounce it on our heads, right? And we'd have to guess what animal it was. Oh! <laughs> spine in a sack. Spine in a spine sack. In a sack. Yeah. I mean, you probably called it something different, back in a bag or something. <laughs> Whatever, it's the same game. I'd Are go... you guys winding me up? Is there really a <laughs> <laughs> I go, oh, is it chipmunk, Dad? And you go, don't be stupid, that's not even indigenous. <laughs> How am I going to find that on a road? <laughs> harder, Sean, work harder! <laughs> Do you never play it? No, I'm really shocked, cos I don't know if you're winding me up or not. <laughs> I'd be mortified if my dad put a dead animal on my head. This is in the 60s, I think my dad was taking a lot of drugs at that time. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what to think. They didn't know. I made it up for a joke. <laughs> very nice man, my dad. Very nice. Did play man. kidneys in a shoe, though, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, John, what, what do you think? Most people think children today are given too much praise. What do you think? I'm with Louise. I don't really know what to think about what's happened in the last five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, if you praise someone, then they'll think that that's what they should carry on doing. Whereas if you don't praise them, they'll want to do more. So I'm all for saying to kids, that is shit. <laughs> <laughs> See, okay. I, f I feel out of place here because I've got a kid and I'm a loving father. Do you do you praise your kid? All the time. I How mean, old is it? Oh, he's a year and a half. He hasn't got a clue what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one time when you can slag it off and it's just fun because it can't understand. So you go, oh, you shit everything, are you? <laughs> did, um, recently, I took him swimming and a, a kid that was only about five splashed him and I, 
it was only five, but I lost my temper and went, you dick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, I'm 31, I should have probably handled the situation with more dignity. <laughs> OK, so most people think children today are given too much praise, true or false. What are you going to say, Sean? No, um, what do you think? I think you're right. I think they most probably think we should be tougher. Yeah, OK, we'll go true then. So you're going true? What are you going to go for, John? Let's go false. Make okay. it exciting. Why not? I can tell you the answer is false. Yes! <laughs> Yes, only 33% of people think children today are given too much praise. Children respond best to supportive praise and gentle encouragement, and if that doesn't work, lock them in their bedroom and tell them Santa's dead. <laughs> so the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here's your question. Most annoying habit. i got loads of these. People who breathe through their nose when they've got a cold and they've got a little snot flap. Oh. <laughs> oh, that is bad. That's bad. Clicking open and closed. How can you not hear that? People next door can hear that thing. <laughs> Yeah. People who yeah. laugh at texts and then don't tell you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh who was that? Don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> and then people right. who, when you're in a bit of a bad mood, keep asking you what's wrong. There's nothing wrong. Seriously, what's wrong? There's nothing wrong. I'm just in a bad mood. What's wrong? It's you now. <laughs> just get out of my face. <laughs> the thing you do. I can't stand it. <laughs> that thing you do, you do like a little skip, you go, and then you go. You go. You skip. You go. <laughs> but Sean, you try it. If you walk from there to there, you've got to then sure. turn Good. round. And it, 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 no, you just do that. Well, how would you? Sure. How would you do it? You just how would you do, do it? You just do this. <laughs> Not easy, Sean. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sean Lock, everyone. Sean Lock. <laughs> You don't do this. <laughs> what is your problem? <laughs> I've got a wobbly head. <laughs> I've got a wobbly head. Apart from that, I think you're great. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're amazing, Jimmy. <laughs> so, most annoying habit. Uh, Nails picking. That is the right yes. answer. Yes. No second. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the most annoying habit is nose picking. I tell you, he was terrible at nose picking. Michael Jackson. He just could not make up his mind. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Russell, and Louise have two points. John, Elliot, and Mark have three points. They're tonight's winners. <laughs> Thanks to all our wonderful panellists, our studio audience, and all of you for watching at home. If you want more, tune in tomorrow night to air Thank you, Time Cut. That's it from us. Good night.